It's the unofficial start to the season, Media Day 2022, inside the Sacramento Kings practice facility. I'll take you in the building. You're going to hear from De'Aaron Fox, DeMontis Sabonis, Keegan Murray, Mike Brown, Monty McNair, and more right here on Locked on Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked on Kings. Hello and welcome into Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a Sacramento sports reporter and producer at ABC 10 News. And I was inside the practice facility today covering what ended up being my favorite media day that I've ever covered. And a lot of it has to do with the amount of fresh faces. Look, media day is a day of optimism around the league. Every single team thinks they're going 82-0. and 0. Every single team thinks they're winning the championship. Every single team thinks they're making the playoffs. So there's always a buzz. There's always an energy. There's an excitement. We're all ready for basketball to return and for the season to get going. But beyond that, a lot of fresh faces, a lot of renewed optimism here in Sacramento. Things are different, or at least that's one of the major messages that was shared or consistent throughout our conversations at Kings Media Day today. Now, we've heard before that things are different and they didn't end up actually being different, so only time will tell if these things are true. But before we dive into all of the audio that you're going to hear today, like I mentioned, you're going to hear from De'Aaron Fox, Keegan Murray, DeMontis Sabonis, Mike Brown, Malik Monk, Davion Mitchell, Monty McNair, Rashawn Holmes, Keon Ellis, Chima Maneke, you're going to hear from all of them on today's episode of Locked On Kings. And I'm not going to waste any time other than telling you some of my biggest takeaways uh, from training camp, or rather, excuse me, from uh, Media Day on the eve of training camp, which begins tomorrow on Tuesday, maybe today if you're listening to this uh, on Tuesday. But regardless, training camp right around the corner. And the biggest takeaways for me from Media Day, number one, and these are in no particular order, I think Malik Monk is going to quickly become a fan favorite, if not the fan favorite, on this Kings team. Not just because of his performance, but because of his personality. Very talkative. You're going to hear him in a little bit uh, talking about playing with De'Aaron Fox again in pickup games uh, in the Kings practice facility before training camp began uh, over the last couple of weeks. You're going to hear him kind of have De'Aaron Fox's back a little bit, talking about how he's underappreciated uh, in a lot of ways. But he's just a bubbly, talkative, exciting guy. Also had a really good thing to say that you're going to hear about starting versus is coming off of the bench. I'm really excited what Malik Monk can be both in the locker room and on the floor for the Sacramento Kings. I'm also really excited for you to hear from Rashawn Holmes in this podcast today because Rashawn is coming off of a year that he describes as hell last year with everything he dealt with on the floor and off the floor, all the injuries, the struggle season after signing a contract that quite honestly wasn't as much money as he was expecting to get. The last year was not the best for Rashawn Holmes, but he made it through and he's coming into this year with something to prove and a chip on his shoulder and a new attitude that I really like. You're going to pick up on some of those uh, those changes uh, to his demeanor a little bit. Still the smiley Rashawn Holmes that we love, but there is definitely a, a new edge to Rashawn this year that really makes me excited. Now, audio listeners, I appreciate you, and you, of course, can listen to everything on this podcast today. You'll hear everything. There will be nothing different uh, from those who are watching on YouTube except all of these clips that I'm going to show you. There are visual versions of these clips. So you can go to YouTube right now and watch this podcast podcast so you can see all the facial expressions and see uh, every player, every coach, general manager uh, that we talk to in this episode. But also, audio listeners, I'm warning you right now because we're going to start with this, and you probably have seen this on social media or seen this somewhere. Mike Brown, during his press conference, and you're actually going to hear the best sound bites from Mike Brown's presser uh, a little bit later on in the show. But during his press conference, he was actually asking a que- or answering a question of mine when in a booth, uh, the Kings were doing photos or some kind of social media of you know the players yelling and, and screaming, letting out a roar, like trying to pump the fans up, pump themselves up. And uh, one of these players let out a very loud scream, very loud roar during his presser, uh, and he responded by yelling and screaming right back. Take a listen. For me, that having that competitiveness, regardless. <laughs> Does that concern you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. Let's go! Mike Brown is just a fantastic personality, uh, and again, you're going to hear from him a little bit later on in the show, but let's start by hearing from... 
as Luke Walton would call him, the head of the snake. Should we retire that now that Luke Walton is gone? I'm not sure. But the guy, the leader, the star on this Kings team, even with DeMontis Sabonis here, we're going to hear from De'Aaron Fox first. Uh, and De'Aaron... I don't know if his demeanor was too different. He came in positive, came in with a smile on his face, which is pretty typical of De'Aaron unless he's going through uh, some rough stretches and some ruts. But De'Aaron had a lot of things to say, uh, including talking about being back playing alongside his best friend and former Kentucky teammate Malik Monk. Just being able to be with him every day now is, is definitely, you know, it's definitely a great thing. Um, you know, aside from his talent and what he does on the court, uh, just being around him and, you know, knowing his family, his brother, his mom, uh, they're, they're just great people to be around. Even though it's been a while since you guys played together at Kentucky, is it like riding a bike? You guys pick up right where you left off? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, like some of the pickup games that we've been on teams, like we're throwing passes to each other that, that nobody else on the team would probably throw. <laughs> just knowing that uh, one another will go get it, or even if it's a bad pass, like we trust, we trust that uh, each other will get it there. So uh, it, it's just great that we've been able to share the floor together again. De'Aaron also talks about how the communication is different this year with Mike Brown and his new coaching staff, how everybody knows what's expected of them. And Sean Cunningham, you're going to kind of hear it here, asks a question about the talent surrounding De'Aaron. And De'Aaron agrees that this is the most talented roster that he's ever played with. Once we, once we hired all the new guys, um, the communication was like, it's been like top notch. Um, you know, everybody knows exactly what they have going on for the next week. Um, so it's, it's something that's been different um, with kind of just how much attention to detail, like how much time you're going to be in there, how much time you're going to be out here. Um, you know, let them know before 5 or 6 o'clock what's going to, everybody will know what's going to happen tomorrow. So no one's ever really surprised by, you know, what's going on. And with respect to previous Kings teams, I think it's easy for us to say this is probably the most talent you've had surrounding you. Do you kind of agree with that? Oh, yeah, definitely. And we, we have a lot of guys that can do a lot of different things. Um, and then, like, for me, it's uh, being with Luke. He's taught me how to actually how to play without the ball. So it's a, we've done a lot of it's, – it's been a great summer, I would say that. Finally, Brendan Nunez had to ask De'Aaron Fox about the criticisms that he's faced. And Fox didn't necessarily have a message for his critics, uh, but he had something to say, to say the least. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm 24. I would still be considered a young guy in every facet, in every way of life. Um, but obviously I've been doing this for going on six years, so it seems like I'm, I'm older or whatever it is. But if you can't get better at 24 years old to however long you're going to play, then there's a problem. Now let's hear from Keegan Murray, the Sacramento Kings rookie who, of course, if you've been following Locked on Kings this summer, you know how excited I am about Keegan. Now, maybe the worst part about Keegan Murray, honestly, is his his interviews. Like, he's a very monotone, kind of soft-spoken, really even-keeled guy. So not the biggest in personality. His personality on the floor uh, is really where most of that shines. But Keegan Murray did undergo a wrist procedure earlier in the offseason. He talked a little bit about that procedure and how he's feeling. Yeah, it was just something I did in college. I ended up having to get done during the season. So I uh, decided to get it before the season and then after uh, the season. So I'm um, doing good. It was only about a month. I was out of basketball-related stuff. So... Um, now I'm back, back to normal. I asked Keegan about what he is working on or what he has been focusing on after getting the context of playing in the California Classic and Summer League if there were specific parts of his game uh, that he knew he had to pay a little more attention to before training camp. I feel like I did a lot of good things um, in Summer League, but also things I need to work on. Um, just being stronger with the ball, um, just kind of finding my way, um, trying to make the game a lot more simple um, than, than what it is. So. Uh, just trying to simplify my game, and uh, uh, and that's really what I've been working on. Being able to sc score within the flow of the offense was something that was really noticeable from your time in both the California Classic and, and in Las Vegas. Yeah. Is that something that you're expecting to focus even more on, playing next to a Fox, next to a Sabonis guy who draw so much attention, or is there something else? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's always something that, that's big in my game, on just being able to uh, play with different guys, being able to feed out different guys. Uh, when uh, like Fox and Sabonis have the ball and things like that. So um, that's something that um, I've obviously focused on really a lot um, within the offense, but also at some points you got to create your own shot, um, that too. And um, that's something that uh, has been harped on me um, throughout the, these last couple months. We, uh, we expect a couple of starting spots to be open for competition here during training camp. Is that a personal goal of yours? I'm not even thinking about that at this point. I'm just focused on myself at this point. Um, what I do in practice day in and day out, just work hard, 
uh, put 110% effort, and I know good things will happen. So uh, if I do that, uh, the sky's the limit for me. And um, I know there's a lot of really great players in this building right now. So um, I'm ex excited to compete for sure. Next, let's hear from Kings star big DeMontis Sabonis. And there are a lot of good sound bites from this uh, conversation, but I only pulled a couple. The first one is Sabonis talking about the rookie, Keegan Murray. He's great. He's been great. You know, great kid. Coming and works every day in the gym all day. And uh, every, everyone saw him in Summer League. Uh, we were there present watching a couple of games. And um, he's going to be amazing for us. Uh, I feel like he fits uh, perfect in, in our system that we're trying to build. And um, I, I, I honestly think he's just going to get better and better. How much fun was that at Summer League? We saw you guys sitting yeah. courtside and, and freaking yeah. out when you hit that, that game tying yeah. shot to send it to overtime. Uh, that was very fun. That was actually my first Summer League event, anything to be a part of. So um, it was really cool that we got to see that game. You know, uh, we wish we wish they won that game, uh, but, it, but, it, but it was really cool being a part of the guys, going out to get dinner, um, spending time with everyone. And of course, Sabonis being a, a pick and roll big man, he makes point guards look better and point guards make him look better at times. And of course, that's not just De'Aaron Fox. I asked him about his relationship with Davion Mitchell in addition to where he and Fox can take their game to the next level. Um, it's great. It's great. Um, anytime I work out, he hits me up, can I join, can I join? Like, uh, he really wants to learn. Um, he's like a sponge. He asks me questions. Um, I don't know how to like, first day I got back, I had a workout. I was going to go at my rhythm, you know, jet lag, came back. And he's like, I'm here, I'm working with you. I'm like, okay, let's go to work. And then, you know, it just changes the workout from there. And then uh, we push each other to be better. We saw connections between you and Fox on the floor right away without the practice time. Now that you've had an offseason yeah. to get to know each other and work together, what are your expectations with that partnership? Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I think it's only going to get better. Uh, the more the more we play together, um, we're going to know our habits and what we like and where we like the ball or how he, he likes me saying the screen, you know. So the more we get to play together, it's going to be better. So uh, the fact that we only played, I don't know, how many games were the last year together? 15, 15 something. 15, something like that. So, um, we get a training camp together, and as the season goes on, I feel like our chemistry is going to get better and better. You already heard the screams from Mike Brown, and that is not the only opportunity you're going to get uh, to see him show some of that fantastic personality that he has. Mike Brown had a phenomenal introductory press conference that I encourage you to go back uh, and listen to when he was hired. said a lot of great things, but we got a little bit more context uh, and a little bit more about who Mike Brown is as a head coach, and he started uh, his media scrum today really talking about this summer and what he's liked from this short period that he has been the head coach of the Kings so far? You know, this summer was great. The communication was great from us to the players and the players to us. The connect connectivity of the group was fantastic. Uh, There's a great spirit, energy uh, that you can feel out there from our guys, from our coaches. Uh, you know, that, that spirit, especially on the com competitive side, is something that we're going to carry over to our daily routine. We want to be competitive at a high level. Now, so uh, I'm definitely excited. I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait for this journey to begin. I brought up to Coach Brown that the Kings are going to be playing his former team in the Golden State Warriors, the team that he was an assistant with for a long time with head coach Steve Kerr, three times in the early going and asked if that would provide maybe a little chip on his shoulder to want to perform against his former team. And really, Coach Brown said the Kings are going to have a chip on their shoulder against every opponent on every night. Shoot, we got a chip on our shoulder with everybody, you know, so I don't care who they line up against us first, second, third, fourth, fifth, you know, we, we come to win. And um, we want to have that attitude, we want to have that mindset uh, because this league is hard. Coming up next, you're going to hear from Malik Monk, Davion Mitchell, and Monty McNair in just a second. But that's after I tell you about a great sponsor here of the Locked On Kings podcast, a sponsor that I'm hoping can make you some money. I'm talking about Bet Online. Bet Online is the number one way uh, to enjoy sports gambling this year. If to follow sports, uh, they have all the latest news, all uh, news rather, all the latest information, everything you could possibly want, including the best lines the best games, some of the most fun prop and future bets for the Sacramento Kings right now. And when the regular season actually comes back, of course, there's great lines and great betting already out there for the NFL season for college football right now, so you can cash in on that. But really, when games are going on for the Sacramento Kings this season, whether it's like live betting in-game to game spreads and point spreads and things like that, you're not going to get better odds than what Bet Online gives you. So use Bet Online.
online this season to make money off of that King's knowledge that I know that you possess. Again, check out betonline.net. You heard De'Aaron Fox talking about playing with Malik Monk. Now let's hear from Malik Monk about being back with his best friend De'Aaron. As soon as I came out here, man, we was on the team playing pickup, um, and it was like we didn't miss a beat, man. Uh, it's always lovely to get out there and play with my, my brother like that, man. But Did it surprise you how quickly you and Fox kind of fell back into old times? or just... Yes and no. Um, we both great basketball players, man, and uh, all, all we know if we needed a little bit of time out here. But actually, we didn't need that much time. And, uh, it was a little surprising, but not really. Of course, Malik is going to have his guys back, and I asked Malik about the uh, credit or lack thereof that Fox gets sometimes, how Fox is kind of overlooked, especially on the defensive end. Uh, and Malik, like I said, he had his boys back. I don't think he gets enough credit doing anything, man, uh, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, uh, I think he's going to show a lot of people this year. Um, I think we're going to show a lot of people this year too as well. So he's going to get his credit soon. Finally, a major topic of conversation over the last couple months and a major uh, point that we're going to follow, a major storyline here in training camp is Kevin Herter versus Malik Monk. Who's going to start? Who's going to come off the bench? And uh, Malik was asked about the possibility of starting if he wants to start, if he is okay coming off the bench, and I thought he gave a really, really, really good answer. You can't focus on one thing, man, because it's, it's, it's not your job to, to, to pick the lineups. Um, so I just go out there and, and, and do what I can the best as I can. But, of course, I want to start. Um, but I don't, have, I don't mind coming off the bench either. Um, all I know is I'm going to go out there and, and be the best version uh, of myself I could be and, and, and do everything I can for Mike Brown, man, so we can win. Now to Davion Mitchell. I asked Davion about not just backing up Fox, but playing alongside him potentially as a point guard or shooting guard. Can you speak to the partnership that you can see playing alongside, not just backing up or behind De'Aaron, but playing next to De'Aaron and sharing the floor with him, what you think that dynamic could look like? Yeah, I think this offseason, kind of working um, on a lot of catching and shooting, um, knowing that De'Aaron can get in the lane and pass anyone um, with the best of them. So he, he's also a really, guy, a really good guy to pass the ball. So just me catching and shooting and makes it makes it, his life easier for me. And, and I can do the same thing for both because he's been working hard on his catching and shoot too. So we kind of can just play off each other like that, and especially defensively because he can guard a lot of one through five and he's a really aggressive guard, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Building off of that last training camp, we saw videos of you and De'Aaron going one-on-one, -on -one, especially defensively. What have you seen with De'Aaron's on-ball defense and even off-ball defense, how that game maybe has, has grown or maybe is underappreciated a little bit? Yeah, I think it's underappreciated. I mean, just because, I mean, a lot of the years that we've seen that the Sacramento I wasn't really good in defense, and so you don't really see those moments. But, yeah, I've seen him guard the best of them. i see him really guard Brandon, Brandon Ingram really well, little guards, Trey Young really well, those guys like that. That. So he can kind of guard everyone, um, especially his uh, in the post defense is really underrated. I think people can't just post him up no matter how small or skinny he is. So I think that makes it makes his game more dynamic because he can guard one through five. Great to hear uh, Davion also have uh, De'Aaron's back, especially on the defensive end of the floor there. Makes a lot of good points, especially about De'Aaron Fox as a post defender. I actually went back and looked at a little bit of tape of De'Aaron Fox defending in the post. You know? Davion has a point. Of course, De'Aaron and the Kings as a whole need to improve defensively, but De'Aaron sometimes not as bad as people make him out to be on that end of the floor, especially with how good he is on the offensive end. Stepping away from the basketball side of things, general manager Monty McNair spoke with the media as well, uh, and he was asked by Deuce Mason from the Deuce and Mo podcast about him and his contract status, something that we've been talking about a lot this offseason. I thought he had a fantastic offseason. I think he deserves to be the Sacramento Kings general manager long term. Still has yet to sign any kind of extension, and uh, Monty had some things to say about that. Is my deal like on the internet or something? That, like, it, that people I, talk about. A lot of fans are wondering, <laughs> is Monty getting no, the truth on Twitter? Uh, no, it's, um, you know, for, look, for me and my group, like, we're excited about what we've done. Uh, we're excited that Coach Brown's in here. Uh, I'm the GM right now, and, you know, I got a bunch of work to do, so I'm going to do that uh, until they kick me out, and I hope I'm here for a long time. And uh, I think with this team we put together, we're, we're really going to start seeing that progress. Um, you know, it's taken a couple years for us to – to kind of continue to shape the roster and you know get guys around around Foxy and HB and Rashawn and these guys that've been here, uh, but you know I think for us that's that's what we see our job as and as long as we're here we're gonna do it. All right, I talked to you a little bit earlier about Rashawn Holmes and the chip on his shoulder and how I was really impressed by some of the things that he had to say. So instead of me just telling you about it, I really want you to hear this. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, pay attention to his body language. He is all smiles, uh, but you're going to see and hear that he has some things to prove this year and he's not backing down from that challenge. 
always want to be able to get back on the floor, prove yourself and things of that sort, especially when people get to talking. So I can't wait. You know, last year was hell. You know, no other way to put it. But, um, you know, you go through that, you become a better person and you get a uh, better finished product. So just thank God I'm still standing, had the opportunity to play basketball, and I'm going to use that. I mean, I don't really get, like, personal life and on-court stuff, you know, confused, things of that sort, mixed, you know. Just, um, you know, I was, wasn't good on the court. Wasn't as good as I expected to be on the court last year, and that's period, point blank. And this year, that's going to get vindicated. I'm ready to prove, you know. It's not, you know, I can say, you know, like, I'm just, I'm ready. You know, that's all I can really say, ready to step on the floor and ready to show. I think Rashawn Holmes could be the best backup big in the league, but there are some who believe that Rashawn Holmes and DeMontis Sabonis might get playing time together. There are questions about floor spacing and whether or not that will uh, work, whether or not the pair can fit together. Rashawn was asked about that, and here's what he had to say about playing with Sabonis. Oh, I see that fitting perfectly. You know, uh, we basketball players, man. You put us out there, we'll make it work. I mean, like I said, we basketball players, man. You you put us out there, especially with a guy that talented who can pass, score, push the ball on the break himself. We'll make it work, man. No problem. One of the things I really want to see from Rashawn Holmes this year, in addition to the offense that we know he provides, is him improve as a rebounder and a shot blocker. In terms of athleticism and length, I think he might be the best shot blocker potentially on this Kings roster. So I asked him about focusing in those areas, and he says he'll just do whatever the team needs. I mean, it's whatever is needed. You know, um, whatever the emphasis Coach Brown puts on me to do, that's what I'm going to work on. You know, uh, go out there and play basketball first and foremost. But absolutely, if it's a role or something that's needed that coach Mike Brown puts on me you know it's gonna get done got the chance to talk to Keon Ellis both on the record which you're gonna hear here and a little bit off the record really like Keon he's one of the two two-way contracts on this team along with uh, Namias Keita uh, and Keon I've said this before on the podcast this offseason I think he is in a lot of ways right place right time signed with the Sacramento Kings because the Kings are in need of what he can provide on the defensive end of the floor and Keon talked about that defensive presence that he brings to the NBA I just just go out there and be myself you know uh, we have some good defenders on the team so and, and kind of like you said that's what I pride myself on just going out and, and playing defense and competing at, at a high level so I'm um, really just you know hoping that you know gives off the energy to the rest of the team and you know we can be a good defensive team um, honestly just getting a stop like it, it's not always about you know getting a steal or a block or whatever just just getting a stop forcing forcing guys to miss you're not going to make them miss every time but you know just kind of taking guys out of their rhythm and you know making them miss shots that they normally would make or something like that and I know I've made this comment to you before, and I made the comment to him before even our, our, uh, our, our scrum with him began. I think he shot 100% during Summer League on three-pointers in front of opposing team benches, and I asked him if that's his favorite spot to shoot the basketball. I mean, any, any corner shot is, is – it doesn't hurt when they, when they talk a little bit, so um, <laughs> definitely love shooting in front of other teams' benches. Finally, Chima Maneke. And there are so many others that I did get to speak to, but only have so much time here on the podcast. If you want to hear uh, from the rest of the Kings that we talked to, we talked to everybody on this roster. So if you want to hear uh, from the rest of them, just let me know in the comment section down below or send me an email. Maybe I'll do kind of a bonus episode of Kings Media Day or maybe sprinkle more of those uh, throughout the remainder of this week. Just let me know if you'd like to hear that. But Chima Maneke is the last uh, king that you're going to hear from in today's podcast. Uh, and Chima quickly winning a lot of fans over, played uh, just down the road, played some college ball at UC Davis, was an Aggie just down uh, the uh, the freeway a little bit, I-80. So him being back in Sacramento, he says that he knows he belongs. I know I belong. I know I belong in the league. So um, I've played every summer I play and work out with NBA guys and you know, the world ha doesn't really know me yet. That's fine, but I know I belong. And I think just being anxious, you know, the first preseason game when, you know, we play Staples Center against, you know, my favorite player, LeBron, I think that's the most anxious I'll be. But when I get in the game, you know, it's just basketball. Finally, for those who aren't too familiar with Chima's game, and that's a lot of us, we haven't really seen him play in person, only really seen highlights and things online, his time with Nigeria uh, and, and things internationally. Chima explained a little bit of, of who he is as a basketball player, and you'll hear there's no shortage of confidence in this man. Energizer. Um, I'm tough. I do the dirty things. I feel like I'm the best cutter in the world. And, um, yeah, if you're playing basketball on offense, five guys, there's one basketball, so four people off the ball. If you know how to impact the game without having the ball, then you're a good basketball player. And I feel like offensive rebounds, defense, running, little things, I can sacrifice 
and um, I can be effective. Media Day is a ton of fun. It's one of my favorite days every single year. And again, if you want to hear more from Media Day, if you want to hear uh, from the others I left out, again, we talked to everybody on this roster. And there are other really good clips, like clips from Kevin Herter, uh, clips from Harrison Barnes, clips from Namias Keda, uh, Sam Merrill. There are a lot of players that had some good stuff that I just couldn't fit into this podcast today. So if you want another kind of bonus episode uh, of sound from Media Day, please let me know, and I'd be happy to put that content out for you. Training camp begins tomorrow. I will be at every single training camp availability that I can make it to. We'll be doing that for both Locked on Kings and ABC 10. Very excited to watch training camp, or at least what they'll show us at the end, maybe get a glimpse of some of these battles, uh, and maybe get some answers to some questions that we've had over the last few months here of the off season. But I love media day. One of my favorite days of the year. And I'll tell you what, I'm naturally an impatient person. My patience was already uh, weighing very thin going into media day today. It's now completely gone. Like I know we have preseason basketball in a week, but we're still a little less than a month away from actually opening night on the 17th. I cannot wait for that. And remember I'm giving away a pair of opening night tickets, Kings Blazers Lower Bowl, Section 116, I believe, as a thank you for a fantastic summer and helping us accomplish our goal of 250 reviews on Apple Podcasts. All you have to do to enter to win those tickets is to go on Twitter. You'll see my tweet at the top of my profile, at Matt George Sack, S-A-C. Go to the top uh, of my profile, find my pinned tweet, and just respond to that with a picture, video, story, memory, anything uh, of your time as a Kings fan could be anything. You're entered to win. A third party will select uh, the winner, and I will treat you to two uh, tickets to opening night, Lower Bowl, Kings versus Blazers, which I'm expecting to be a very fun, rowdy, and exciting night inside the Golden One Center. Thank you for your support, as always, here of the Locked on Kings podcast. Can't wait to have you join me on the next episode. Training camp is here, baby. I'm so excited about it. Hope you are, too. You've been listening to Locked on Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Thank you.